Ego is the anesthesia Ego. that deadens the pain of stupidity. Wow. Ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. Damn, I feel like I'm on shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Second, I love that. That's powerful. Wow. Yeah, I'll send you that. Welcome to the DDHD podcast. Where a dream is what you make it, but you never make it without a dream. That's right. My name is Marwan Monomini, and I got my co-host. Juice Rochester, Rochester Juice. And we got a very, very special guest <laughs> in the building. Ooh. A lot of time in the making. We've been waiting for this one, Juice. Um, she's a winner of Polar uh, Polaris Music Prize, mm -hmm. Juno mm -hmm. winner, mm -hmm. BET nominated. A beast on that mic. One of the <laughs> best MCs in Canada and in the game that's rising up. Killing them. So let's give it up for the one, the only, Havaya Mighty! Yay! Yeah. That was a dope intro. Appreciate you. Yeah, no worries. How you doing? seamless, bro. <laughs> I'm good. How are y'all? Feeling great. Bless. Feeling great. Glad to have you here, yo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all, If y'all don't know out there, man, me and Havaya go back. I've been watching her come up from, from sorority days before yeah. that, like just paying attention and just kind of watching from afar. And so I, I see your journey. And I just think it's beautiful. I, I say this on the podcast a lot, like to see people uh, climb to certain heights and know that they came from places where we come from mm -hmm. it brings nothing but joy to my heart, man. You I know, appreciate that. Yeah. So much love. Thank you for coming through on the podcast. Yes, sir. Let's legend. It up. I appreciate yeah. it. Yes, sir. <laughs> so now, super inspiring, man. You, I mean, you're an inspiring figure as itself and mm. we've i mean we've been watching i think canada's been watching mm, mm -hmm. you know what you've been up Absolutely. to but we're so curious to see what's the story behind this right it's not an overnight success it's still yeah. ongoing and it's probably been going on for a long time mm. and when we were chatting you were saying that music's been part of your life since you were like a baby basically right yeah. and how did it start like you, you were in a musical house what yeah happened? yeah very musical household um i got three older three older sisters and uh they were already like playing piano and stuff. Oh wow! When I when I popped out, so uh, four years old, I started singing lessons. My sisters were doing piano lessons, all three of them. Mm. So it was like if if I wasn't singing, they were doing that. So just surrounded by music, um, and I grew up in Toronto, but we used to go to the the New Conservatory of Music, it's in Scarborough, it's a music school, and nice. I was, I was in there for seven years, age four to eleven. So mm. it's like not only was I being taught. But it was also in the house, and then also my sisters were doing it. So you're you're learning it, but then you're also seeing other people's perspective on it. And so I was just around it all the time. All the time. Yeah. Did, were your parents musicians as well? No, they're just extremely musical. Really? And I think see the value and understand the value of music, but they themselves are not musicians. I don't think right. they had the, the luxury, I guess, right. of being musicians. But I really think they kind of passed that on to the four of us. And then my brother came along after, and my brother's also doing his thing too yeah, so yeah, yeah. nice so your dad never had a sound or nothing like that in okay so he had a sound <laughs> okay. you know, if, yeah, yeah like yeah. You know he was playing other people's music yes, but he had yes, a sound yes. my dad even growing up like he had a sound in in, in the basement he had a sound in the kitchen mm -hmm. of yeah, all nice. places mm -hmm. um so yeah if we if it wasn't that part of music like me and my sisters learning also my dad was playing reggae in the house my mom was always playing like you know reggae and soul in the car yeah so it was just like everywhere it was very much a part of our i guess family love language right can I ask one more question? Yeah. Uh, for me, um, growing up, I remember, you know, Sunday morning, um, Akin Sawfish, fried dumpling, platin cooking, Dennis Brown in the background. <laughs> you know, like, were there ever those moments, those songs that might stick out to you from now that they used to play as a kid that kind of resonates oh, yeah, with you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the culture reggae tunes. If You know, if you remove the Akin Sawfish. Yeah. Um, just because I'm a vegetarian, <laughs> you know, Ross. I got you, um, I got you. It's, it was the same vibe, Saturday right. and Sunday morning. And right. sometimes, you know, if my dad happened to not be working, it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know? That's what's up. Um, but yeah, definitely very much the same vibes you're painting. There, yeah. there was a lot of that. Yeah. And then it was interesting because then you have the context of, that but then also um like we were singing like um, like sort of competitively right so we were singing like disney music and mm -hmm. then you know like my sisters were playing concertos like mozart beethoven so there was a very like wide range of exposure of like just different sounds for me as a young mm -hmm. as a young kid that's amazing that's a yeah. wide variety of sounds from like reggae Den or dennis brown or whatever the case be and then mozart yeah. you know that's like a oh yeah because yeah it's buju over here and then <laughs> you have crazy um you know like um maria maria over yeah, here yeah, yeah. like on the radio and things so it's just mm -hmm. lauren hill over here you know so yeah. yeah it was it was a lot that's awesome it was how, a lot how did like hip-hop come into the picture with so many other genres of music surrounding you yeah so i feel like i wasn't listening to hip-hop 
uh, until like maybe six, seven, eight. My cousin, he was the plug for that. He used to always come around and, and I would listen to, he would tell, honestly, the memory for me is not even there until 10, 11, 12. Okay. But like when I was six, seven, eight, like my earliest exposure was him with the Walkman and, you know, like listening to, to the tracks I probably wasn't supposed to be listening to, you know, because, yeah. you know, just where we grew up, I think our parents tried to control the environment as young women. Like I'm born in 92, you know, so it's like what, was being spoken about in hip hop at the time. I think my parents were like, okay, there's a little bit of a barrier here mm -hmm. for our young girls. But I was getting that, you know, from the Walkman from my cousin Michael. Shout out Michael. Time. Um, Yo, you know, I'm sorry, so, but everybody had a cousin who would play the songs that you weren't supposed to. Yeah, hear, fam. Yeah. They, the, the big up to the cousin, them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, big shout out. And I and I, it's funny. Like the origins, I don't even think I fully remember the original seeds that were planted, right? Because okay. I was so so young. But mm -hmm. I started seeing kind of the results of it around 10 11 12 by right. this time i moved from toronto to brampton and then it kind of became a little bit more intentional mm -hmm. me starting to rap and me choosing in like you know early 2000s you know i was very much into like 50 and nelly and that's when like i became very aware of what i was intaking and like what i liked yes yeah now, that's yes. a beautiful decade for hip-hop in it itself was. you know it was like... oh, can't be topped <laughs> <laughs> Get you think it's season. the top top? You guys agree? No, no. I'm I'm I'm, I'm 90s all day. But... 90s all day yeah, in your yeah. 2000s. I, mean, I guess so. It's even the nostalgia for me can't be top for sure. For yeah. sure. But yeah. I think that every era has that feeling. So sure. going through throughout those genres of music that influenced you, I guess your house seemed to be lenient, or was it a strict <laughs> household? Is that she what laughed. you get? Is that yeah. what you gather? Yeah, I'm, I'm just asking. You know, <laughs> I'm not. I'm trying to figure out what I said that would make you think. That. I mean, like to me, for me, if you if if a household listens to so much different types of variety of music i've always been accustomed to that's like a little more lenient household versus strict so in my perspective i'm like oh maybe her parents were chill or were they like interesting or... absolutely not no, no? okay tell nah. me about that no nah, my parents were they're, they're pretty strict it, i yeah. guess i see what you're saying because usually what comes with like parents being strict is like them trying to control your destiny sometimes yeah yeah um very lucky to not have to experience that part of it but okay. like outside of that uh, very strict i wasn't yeah. allowed i do think for them it was a protection thing but mm -hmm. yeah i wasn't allowed to have sleepovers or like go over to a friend's house or like okay what about religion was that a big part of your life or? um yeah my dad's Ras rasta and and okay. very much like grew up in that environment vegetarian raised vegetarian right. so like strict from like diet was strict diet, yeah. um my dad, in in his essence, is strict. You know, he's he's you know vegan man, like wow. natural hair, doesn't dye the ting. Mm -hmm. Like he's very much, he's very much that. He's yeah. you know he's just very ital, very 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 natural. Mm -hmm. And um, right. so yeah, to this day, there's things that I know that I know make us very different. You know, even like t having tattoos, unfathomable when mm -hmm. I was young. You know, mm -hmm. or piercings or uh, sorts of expression that's just different than what my parents are used to like absolutely not but the music was the form of expression i always had and i think that helped create kind of a balance hmm. for all of us and were you like the weird kid in school <laughs> like did you find you stood out because i'm i'm uh, the way the reason why i asked i'm like you live in north america okay like you grew up in north america we're like mcdonald's burger king driven whatever while mm -hmm. your father is rasta and you have a very strict diet and li lifestyle mm -hmm. did that stand out yeah, I feel like I stood out. Yeah. Hey, you read him. Are you a therapist? <laughs> I, like, I won't charge He's you either. <laughs> Yo, oh hip covering that, all right? Thanks, Doc <laughs> Ford. Don't kill me. Yeah, no, you're definitely reading me. Um, yeah, I would say I was probably more weird than I ever realized that I was. Very much like a lone wolf okay. person. Yeah. Okay. And beat how to was... beat of my own drum type. Mm -hmm. Got and did that were you like a loner in high school or it's like I was and I wasn't. It's like I feel like being a loner is like when you want something different and you recognize that you don't have it mm -hmm. and you therefore feel out of void i had zero awareness of the fact that i was so different i was just actually just so different and just in like so in that that i don't i wasn't aware until i would say my music career kind of made me aware of how different i was because uh the more that my expression became public is the more that i realized it's not how other people think or how mm. they move True. And then I and like informed me, I was like, oh, word, that's that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> okay. But I didn't know, like in grade 11, grade 12, like I wasn't trying to go to the parties or like 
it was weird. I was like, I a lot of people knew me, but I had no interest. So I wouldn't really say I was like a loner, or like a, but I definitely wasn't in the in crowd. Like I wasn't being invited to the things, but was, my energy was not. Yeah, like you said, beat to your own drum. You yeah, know? You just like that, like, and you were because in high school everybody's trying to click up For at real. that time, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I think we get discouraged a lot, like, if you're trying to be original, you know? And that 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 can sway a lot of people because you're like, oh, I, I might not fit in this crowd or mm. they might not like me. So to have the confidence or just the... It, it, it could be just unawareness that it was it was you know? honestly that like yeah. i love to say i was so confident you know yeah yeah <laughs> but like more than that i was i was very very unaware right. which is interesting because my authentic energy is that so even coming right. over like i had to be more recognized i feel like i started to fall into that trap a little bit like right. late like after high school i'm like now i'm like perceptive of what people think and like almost getting trapped up in that and then having to like getting older having to come back to that and be like now you've always been outside, like you've always been a little bit left of center. That's yeah. your actual authentic core energy. Yes. And that's always been you. So like, why are you trying to like undo what a lot of people are trying to chase, yeah. you know? So yeah. I'm actually reconnecting with myself in a way where it's like my energy that, that's always been there, yeah. but now I'm aware of it and I think ahead of it. I think that's one of the best things as a, a parent you could give to a child is that, you know, to be yourself, 100%. And not to worry about that because people are always going to try and put you into a box. Mm. And if you don't know who you are, you're going to jump in any box that they're going to tell you to jump in, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you can have that, even if it's unaware, you know, it might have been subliminal through the family and how you uh, It was were definitely, raised, yeah, it was definitely right? through the family. You know, there but was a rigid a environment, so I was rigid within myself. So it was like, you know, one thing is like when you're young, like I think that I just understood lessons we learn later about like social interaction and yeah. people having different ulterior motives and stuff so i very yeah. much just protected my energy, energy. In, the in the same way my parents protected the energy around the home like mm -hmm. grew up in a very racist environment mm -hmm. so was, i was always surrounded by this protection i have three older sisters so there's always there's always something that's just like you know there here's this box and you kind of just stay within the box right. so in a sense i police myself which i think led to like late expression but in a sense i also protected myself which is something that helps me so much as a musician today yeah. it's helped me so much in my journey as an artist and not getting wrapped up in certain things as well because my energy is not attainable or accessible the way yeah. some other people's might be just from the way i was brought up good you for know? you because that that takes a lot i feel like listen i'm 34 i'm just realizing in the past couple of years for you to to have that kind of self-awareness mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. such a young age i'm like you from what you're saying your parents definitely and your family instilled that mm -hmm. in you yeah, so that, that's those are some them. valuable that's lessons great, right man. there and man. i think in life we're all going to get caught up in that at some point yeah you know I, I i think no matter who you are who you're protected by it's some sometimes the life be life in, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're gonna get caught up in some stuff. And if you don't have a solid foundation, like you had to come back to and say, hold on, I was good from when I was doing it this way. I don't need people to tell me like I should be doing it another way or mm -hmm. trying to follow whatever's going on when I know myself, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of artists now are finding that at least the really good ones they can say like yo we're seeing it the more original you are the more niche your music is the better chance you have of standing out because yeah. nobody wants to be the second we don't li want to listen to the second version of anybody of any yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah. i don't want to hear another version of somebody i already like yeah you know i would rather hear your version and it might be different and it might be weird or whatever but at least when they want to hear that, they're coming to you first yeah. and not yeah. anybody else. So yeah, I think that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah, definitely an interesting balance too with the industry because that's definitely one of the dichotomies is like yeah. how are you original, but also like there's the other side of like just following trends too, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's interesting yeah. to see how Find your balance. upbringing could contribute to like how you approach that concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you, you, uh, you're from Brampton, right? From Toronto, from Toronto, but like raised in Brampton as well. Raised okay. in Brampton, mm -hmm. and uh, you were saying, and how how old's your uh, younger brother? Yeah, I think he's like twenty two now. Okay, mm -hmm. so you got a pretty little big, gap, little mm -hmm. gap there. Mm -hmm. So how was it being raised in a household of like four siblings, all girls? You were the baby, and you were the baby. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Did you feel like you were the baby, or? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I was the baby. You got the last piece of vegetables and yeah. <laughs> you know what it really was, I was say chicken as a very opinionated person i just felt like a little bit unheard growing mm -hmm. up i guess like yeah. i felt like 
things were already decided for me. Mm. So mm. I think it took me longer to come to terms with like things about myself that might not be the same as my sister's experience. Right. Like it took me a, a little while to be like, oh, I don't have to actually be like exactly in the box. Like mm. I could, look, you know, like be a little bit outside of it. But yeah, I'd say that's the biggest thing is just feeling like your destiny's a little bit decided already. Got it. But I, it also helped me a lot, right? Because they taught me a lot too. So mm. yeah, Catch 22, I guess. And were they supportive of your my musical sisters? career in the beginning? Yeah, your sister. My sisters. sister specifically? Yeah, your sister. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very supportive family. Like okay. my sister Omega Mighty, she's an artist as well. Yeah, like shout she's out to her. she's doing she's doing a lot of things. She was just nominated for her for her first Juno. Yeah, and yeah, shout out Omega. Shout out Omega. And a lot of people don't know, like, she was getting the live show opportunities before me and bringing okay. me out to do a little verse and I was coming out all shy. Hey. You know, and then I got my sister Novlap, yeah. who uh, brought two beautiful sons into this world, you know, but she's also extremely musical, plays the piano, sings, and then my older sister, who's a piano teacher, mm. right? So it's like, we all kind of had different forms of outer expression of the same thing. We used to be like mm -hmm. the Mighty Sisters and Scarborough, like yeah. we had a little mixtape and stuff. So it's like, yeah. yeah, it's like meant to be, it feels almost, you know? Well, that There's was a always tape, been. You're Hmm? I'm sorry. You said you were the you had a mixtape with your with your sister. Yeah. Well, we the music school we went to yeah. they like made projects mm -hmm. and like for charity and stuff like that. And so we were the mighty sisters in that school. We used to win a lot of scholarships, um, which was good because we couldn't really afford to pay for lessons. So um, the scholarships pretty much just paid for the lessons, and wow. like so we just had to work hard to keep getting the the the, the teachings, I guess you could say. Yeah. But yeah, like that was the, the seeds were planted for all of us. So. Everybody in my media family was extremely supportive, which I know is not something a lot of artists get. You know, mm -hmm. very grateful for that. Good on that, man. And, and uh, was that your first musical project that was released? Was the Mighty Sisters? Yeah. 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 Like it was like a song on a charity album. Right. Okay. So it was like they chose. I don't know if it's the creme de la creme of the school, mm -hmm. um, but we like all four of us and my sister Alicia. She played the piano on it, and I remember like that was the, my first studio experience was recording that song. I think it was like a, it was a cover too. It was like that song. Say it's all right. Mm -hmm. It's all, all right. right. Yep. Say it's all right. <laughs> you know, and like. I remember that. That was definitely like my first. Oh, this is a studio. Like <laughs> harmonies. Like oh, we gotta like sing layers. Oh, we gotta double our vocals. Like yeah, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> and how how far into that did the uh, sorority group happen? Was that Ooh. far out afterwards? Yeah, sorority was far out because that was I was like a child then, like under ten. Yeah. When, oh wow. When that was happening, oh, yeah. Damn. Sorority was digits. when sorority was in sorority first came to fruition 2016. Yeah. Right. I don't know how old I was, but like a lot right, older. Eight years ago, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, this was like, I went to, I graduated high school, I went to college for music. Right. I graduated from that, I came back, and then I was working for a few years, and then the sorority happened. Mm. That definitely was, I would say, pivotal moment in my career. It's definitely where music went from, I would say like, like I've been doing it, but it was all recreational, not right. monetizing. Okay. Sorority kind of changed all that, like just mentally. That 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 changed a lot in terms of my visibility. That changed a lot in terms of the way I utilize social media. Right. Uh, yeah, that changed my entire career. I would say. Wow. Seems like it helps you shape you into an artist. How did that even happen? What What is the birth of the sorority group yeah. and how it influenced you? The birth of sorority. So I obviously like just told you the journey of just mm -hmm. being involved in music and like releasing stuff online and here and there, but nothing that. I had a couple moments, but nothing that was like, oh, you're building a fan base, right? Yeah. But I was always making music. It was definitely like my love, my bread and butter. And so I was invited to be a part of a cypher in 2016. At the time, like there was this platform, Team Backpack, like Backpack Rapping. They were really big on Facebook. And uh, I guess they were producing a piece of content. There was a, a male cypher, all male cypher, mm -hmm. that dropped in December of 2015, I want to say. And then like, what, um, March of 2016 is when the all women one dropped. And I remember like, that was a pivotal moment for me. I was like working at Long and McQuaid. I remember I got invited and I was like, I can't cause like I got work that day. And like, I, that, there was, I didn't have that full hunger yet. You know, I didn't understand what the level of sacrifice that was required. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the producers of the videos, he was like, it's in your bench. It's in your best. He's like, it's in your best interest. If you, if you are there. Just, just be there. Okay. Yeah. And I remember, like, I was like, damn, that really resonated. And I remember yeah. I worked to get my shift switched, and yeah. it was synergy. I remember that day when I pulled up. Uh, there was three other artists: Phoenix, Keisha, 
Yeah. Uh, Phoenix Pagliacci, Keisha Fresh, and um, Lex, Lex Leosis. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I think I heard of one of the artists before, but I never met any of these artists. And we were all blacked out, blacked out fit, like we talked about it. And I just remember the cypher, the synergy of doing it was like so raw. And it was so like, I don't know. I just remember when I left, the energetic feeling within me. And I was like, if Man, you're an artist, you everybody knows exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. it was you my first sleep time after I, that. No, it was my first <laughs> time. I remember sleep. I had a, it was one of the best drives I had home. It was just yeah. I was buzzing, you know. Yeah. It just felt like we just did something really special, and I was just like, mm -hmm. man, I can't wait to see how it's edited, how it comes together. And I remember it was put out for International Women's Day, like maybe mm -hmm. a month or two after we we shot it. And yo, it went viral. Like for me, it was viral. It was yeah. um, they posted it on Facebook and then they chopped up all of the verses. So there was our individual verses as well. And all five of these videos were, were floating around. I remember my verse got a million views in three days. Wow. That was like life changing for me. Like my phone yeah. back then, the Blackberry could not, could <laughs> not handle it. Like it was dying all the time. And I was getting a lot of email requests and like um, Facebook messages of like producers sending me beat packs and people like saying, yo, I'm trying to reach you, but your email on your Twitter was wrong. Or it just put into perspective, like, the crazy amount of eyes on me and like where I was dropping the ball. It just kind of mm. highlighted all of those things. And I was like, okay, like I got, I can't post my food on Snapchat anymore. Or like, I can't, cause I was like realizing, <laughs> yeah. oh, your, your email's not the same on your Facebook business page as your Twitter. Like yeah. these things matter. And it really, it really matters. Like that origin point. A lot of people heard about me through that video. That was their origin point. Right. But then when they went looking for me, it's like, they can't tie it to anything else. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is the music business like uh, all that time i'd been uh, rapping and i think that that's really good because i've perfected no nah, I, won't, I won't say perfected but i i got good at my craft yes. you know mm. but i had zero understanding or very limited understanding of you know the music industry and on top of that i had done music industry arts at fanshawe college like i took a two-year diploma course from 2011 to 2013 so I kind of got this like educational side of learning but none of it was being applied yeah and this was like that moment of like yo you got to take everything you've learned from the ability to rap to reaching the people that want to hear it and you have to you have to apply yourself this is your moment Fact. and i remember that video like had so much traction throughout 2016 we had like two million views um within a month mm. you know the group video also reached two million views within like two months wow. and me and the other three uh, artists that were part of the cypher, we kept getting invited to do the cypher over and over. That was a cypher year, and I just kept getting asked to do cyphers. And I was actually like, ah, uh, this isn't exactly what I want. This is, not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like, this is really good, but this is not my vision. Like, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, you know, like I want to be a, a musician, and I want people to know that I can make bodies of work, not just spit bars. I want to be able to spit bars too. Like I want them to know that, but I felt like I only communicated part of the vision by yeah, that point. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, how do I use this as like a jump off point to communicate the rest? And mm. so I set a goal. Not long after I did the cipher, I set a goal of like, I have to I have to convert all of these new fans to like Hawaii Mighty fans. I have to decide. Mm -hmm. And so that 2016 year was the first year where I like really set a lot of intentions. I took all the things I learned from college. I, right. I started to really kind of like brainstorm sessions and writing stuff down. And right. I had four main goals that year and i was like i want to make a body of a work i want to make a project because i had put out four projects in all this time i was talking about but like nobody knew you know what i mean like no one had any idea so i was like okay i'm gonna put out a project but people are gonna know this time and i'm gonna have a release party and i'm gonna have a little event people are gonna come out to it which i actually had the same place where we shot the cypher so that was yes, cool yes um and i was like i want to get a grant i learned years ago that you can get money in Canada to support your music. I want to get a grant so that I can reach, I, I can put that to marketing or just something I know I don't have the capital for. Yeah. So that was one of my major goals. Yeah. And I was like, I want to I wanna start meeting team members because I, I learned about that, but I wasn't trying to apply. And I was like, I want to start meeting booking agents, people okay. that can put me in front of uh, artists, people that can put me on stages. I have no relationships with venues. I'm not good at networking. Oh, yeah. I want to start meeting the people that will open those doors for, doors for me. Yeah. And I had a goal as well. I was like, I would eventually love to have management. I would eventually love to have someone that di helps dictate the business because it's always been my weak point, you know? And uh, I put out this project pretty much a year after the cypher called Flower City. It was inspired by Brampton. It was where I was living. Um, and that's like the like the slang word for like Brampton, I guess. It's right, like right. Yeah. Flower yeah. City, like yeah. the... And like, yeah, the project was just like me coming to my understanding of self. You know, I grew right. up with, 
I feel like a lot of lack of personal awareness mm -hmm. because I was informed by my environment, as we talked about. So this was the first time I started to like think for myself, put it on wax. Yeah. Um, and that project, off of that project, I was able to get my first grant with Factor. Um, I was able to uh, have, JSR, a, have a release was it a party. JSR? It was nah, not no. that because I wrote because I wrote about myself, so it was the artist. Really, you wrote your own grad. Yeah, I, well, like I didn't have the capital for wow. JSR, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, and like I didn't understand, like that was above my head. But the artist right. development grant, yes. which yes. is a two thousand dollar grant, it's a great yes. grant, and I think I used it for like PR or something, like okay. just something that I wouldn't have access to if not for i didn't want to use it for something that i could afford like yeah. i was like i want to add listen um, man i know a man who just pocket that yo you know what i mean bought a chain off of that and yeah. they might put out a, was a 2k <laughs> chain though <laughs> like, yeah, so that's a half flex yeah a quarter flex so at least you had a plan for it yeah. yeah i really i really did i really yeah. did and the good thing is like from the whole high school not trying to fit in thing i wasn't trying to get i wasn't trying to fit in so chains was not in the Mm. You know, it was not in the scope, but yeah. release party. I was able to have that release party. I was yeah. able to get a, a booking agent to come out to the release party. Yeah. Um, and that booking agent ended up being my booking agent. He's still my agent now. He he introduced me to my previous management, mm. and then my previous management helped me secure my first JSR. Hey. And that's where the real. That's where it was like okay, run and gun. Like we're gonna put a, we're gonna actually put a project together. Yes with actual support. Cause my pre, the, the Flower City project, which was technically my fifth project, but it was all me. Yes. It really opened a lot of doors for a lot of people that was like, oh, you got a lot of potential, but it's gotta, we gotta make it bigger. And yeah. then that, that, that just really started the visibility of Hawaii Mighty. That started like people knowing who I am back in 20, 17? Yeah, I t there was so many jewels in oh, there, yeah. man. Oh, so yeah. many jewels. Oh, that was I mean, a lot. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's go dissect. back and yeah, dissect, dissect those a little bit. It was um some things I heard um from the beginning. It it sounded like your plan was even though you were with the sorority and and these great things are happening and that energy was there, you always had a plan to be Hawaii mighty and and take your uh career to the next level right or, oh yeah or expand beyond and bigger yeah, yeah i mean I was, I was putting on music since 09 yeah, yeah um and that happened in 2016. it was an it, it was an incredible injection and some of the firsts of like what it's really like to be an artist happened with a sorority in yeah, terms yeah. of touring right and like just like working with a manager we had a manager and yeah. stuff like that but yeah hawaii mighty was a thing years before, before that, that and i always yeah. knew during that it would still be a thing mm. so what i want to know is after yeah so what i want to know is was everybody on the same page was that the same page for the other members in the group was that was those discussions had because it seems like even to this day like everybody's supportive like me and keisha fresh are very cool oh, you know yeah. what i'm saying like i see phoenix and i hail her up i think everybody in their own right is super dope like you know so um, yeah, but fact. shout out for you one time, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's beautiful to see and to see, you know, you guys form like Avengers and just, you know, make <laughs> the moves that you made was, it's a beautiful thing to see. But, um, when you're in a group, sometimes, you know, heads can clash, egos get big or people, uh, you know, communication isn't the best. So sometimes things can get misconstrued. Mm. So, but if you have that communication in the beginning, like, hey, we're doing this, but I'm still Hawaii Mighty, you're still Keisha Fresh, you're still, and everybody's still um, on their own separate journey. Yeah. Was that I mean, that's an amazing question. I definitely feel like we didn't have the discussion. No? Okay. No, okay. I think I was under the pretense that yeah. that's what it was because we didn't actually decide to be a group until like, the end of the year that the cipher happened so right. the end of 2016 it was because of the fact we kept getting invited to do this cipher right that we were the, the idea was kind of brought within like the group chat it was like yo right. i want to like try to do this for a little bit but yeah. like that happened that wasn't even a concept when the cipher happened mm. so for me it was always the solo was just always happening and that was like an ad again that was an addition right but yeah the conversation wasn't had and i do think that because the conversation wasn't had, I don't I don't know if everyone had the same Mindset. idea. I right. definitely think there was an imbalance of, I think there was an imbalance at times, like specifically with maybe people thinking that I wasn't all the way in mm. because I was working at Long and McQuaid the entire time. I do want to talk about that too. Shout yeah. out yeah, yeah, shout out Long and McQuaid. McQuaid. Oh, Girl, thanks for on, these stands. Yo. Thanks for the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yo, those are the homies, man. Yeah. I was working at I was working there the entire time right. of the entire span of the sorority. Yeah. Full time, 40 hours a week. Um, and then I was doing wow. Hawaii Mighty full time, wow. however many hours a week, and then that was added. 
And then like, I also, I lived in Brampton, so. <laughs> Gio Sorry, G- Gio was just shouting out long and long way, way man. We're, <laughs> we're fans. Um, I was traveling from Brampton a lot as well for a lot of the obligations that we had. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think I was just, I had a lot of things going on and I think I was so invested in the sorority that when I, again, I told you I put my solo project out in 2017. Mm-hmm. Two months after the cypher, I already knew I was going to put out a solo project, right? right? Okay. But then a month after that, I was like, okay. the sorority, we want to put out a project. Yeah. So I was like, well, both of these things have to happen. Right. So I actually told my management team, there was a, there were a new team at the time. Yeah. I was like, yo, I'm, I want to do the sorority thing. Right. And I dedicated all of 2018 to doing the sorority. I was still doing Hawaii Mighty, but it wasn't, nothing was being released. Okay. Yeah. So I was working on what would be my project that came out in 2019 called yes. 13th Floor. Yeah. And that project changed my life. But Big. I was focused outwardly on the sorority in 2018 mm-hmm. but i think because i was working full time also making Hawaii mighty music and we never had that discussion mm-hmm. sp- like like direct i just assumed i was like y'all was artists before this like yeah, how yeah, else yeah. would they have gathered us here to do this cypher and mm-hmm. i'm just you guys are still doing solo stuff so again i just assumed that that did lead to some of the yeah. contention that happened just based on some of the things that were said some of the, yeah. some of the arguments that happened on the road right yeah i definitely think there was a there, there was this perception at times of like, you're not all the way in, right, like right. me being not all the way in, right. which was so offensive to me because... You were, but you always knew where you were trying to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's yeah. like the indication of... And you can be both. Sorry to cut you, but I think you can be both. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can know like th- this energy is for right now, but in the, I have a plan in my grand scheme of things of where I need to go. That doesn't mean yeah. I'm not less invested. I just know the trajectory of what I'm on. Exactly. Yeah. And it was one of those things where I didn't even know what exactly was going to be the plan. Right. I just knew that Vi Mighty was not going to take back seat forever right yeah. but i definitely had that take a back seat in 2018 and right, right, right. I, like for me it's so instrumental to my journey i'm really glad that i did yeah um but yeah i do think you know i learned a lot about communication outside of the sorority years ask. later <laughs> yeah. Yeah. which it's like man i could spearhead some of those issues now like yeah. Yeah. just thinking about what they were but um yeah i think we all learned a lot we learned a lot about working with other people, about expectations, about yeah. writing yes. amongst other people, about just like sharing stories together. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. Communication and control, I find, are like the key things when it hap- when you have a lot of cooks in the kitchen yeah. and a lot mm. of team members. One is everybody communicating properly, yeah. and that takes a long time to learn and as long as everybody sets their expectations i find there's no reason to get angry when it's like, "Hey, I communicated and you agreed and the second thing I find is taking control and losing control mm. where it's like if you're your individual artist you define Hawaii mighty as you see fit because that is your brand at the end of the day versus if you're in a group you have to let go of control did you find it difficult in those moments when you need to let go of control of things you know what i found difficult is that again is that aware unawareness thing i didn't really take control anywhere okay except in the making the music part. Okay. That's where I kept control and I knew I was still gonna make a vibe my music and no one could ever make me wait for inspo with a group to make mm-hmm. a song idea that I had in my bed at 3 a.m. type shit. Mm-hmm. So I was always doing that, but like, yeah, control. Like, I didn't have a clear vision anywhere. So I could, like, I think about little things. Like, for example, oh, we, we gonna have a rehearsal downtown Toronto at 6.30. Okay. And I know I work till six. Okay. It's like I'm not taking the control to be like that's inconvenient for right, me and it's right. actually going to inconvenience y'all because I'm going to be late every single time. Right. So it's like I, I, I wasn't able to kind of MacGyver the way I am now, right. the way I can kind of spearhead things so that I could m- make everything fit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So yep. like and then on the Vi Mighty side, it was the same thing, you know, mm. like. I was following instruction a lot when it came to the business side because that came late to me, you know. So as I was learning, it's like. It's interesting. It's like no one could tell me what to do. <laughs> no one could ever tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have a line, right? Yeah. To w- but I, but I could be kind of led and like influenced. And it's like, do you yeah. want to do this? And do you want to do that? You were so fluid. You were fluid. Yeah. Very much fluid, yeah. right? And 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 I knew sorority was the focus in right. terms of output. But like, um, yeah. All I knew is like this album. Like it was called Pledge. I'm like, we gonna yeah. we gonna we gonna tour this. We gonna and then. When this year ends, I'm gonna have a conversation with my management team. Hopefully, they're still there. Yeah, you know, because yeah, 
they came in at a time when sorority was the priority. I'm like, damn, I hope they, I hope they stick around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and again, I just kind of like moved with the music. I let the music guide me. Yeah. So like, yeah, I, overall, I would say that I was someone who tried to control things, but also Not relinquished right. control in so many other ways and like was unaware of that. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I find that's a good learning lesson overall, where it's like, if you are fluid in those moments, you can kind of bird's eye view observe what you did and what you didn't do and kind of learn how to do it better next time. Facts. So let me ask you about, you know, the, the uh, conclusion of, of the sorority girls when, when things did end. Was it, you know, amicable that everybody was on the same page or did people want to carry it on when others didn't? Huh. That's a good, that a good, that a good question. <laughs> That's why they pay me the no bucks. <laughs> Pass me always still looking for sponsors, baby. Um, <laughs> It wasn't amicable initially. Okay. Um, I think there were there were there were some back end stuff that led to some people just being ready to be done. Okay. Um, and that was a decision that was kind of like made. Like we didn't really make it as a group. It was like this person is kind of done, and therefore, what's the meaning of this anymore? Done. Well, yeah. no, at, there were like one of the members left, and 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 then the three of us continued for maybe a year. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a collective decision. It was more like an individual decision. And then we did it for a year longer, I think. And then after that, it was a collective decision where okay. we all kind of disbanded. And there were some energies, I would say, for a little while. Right, right, right. right. Um, but yeah, like when you get older, like I think that you kind of look back. I think everybody looked back on, on a POV type vibe and was like, hey, like we just kind of had some some disagreements about what was happening but we all actually rock with each other as talented individuals as spitters as mcs and you know so we definitely all hash that out at this at this point yeah. and you know like we're we're all we're all cool with each other like i think that yep. everybody from the sorority like lex is so talented mm -hmm. keisha's so talented mm -hmm. phoenix is so talented as mm -hmm. well and um yeah like there were there was a time when it was not it was weird, it was right, weird. but yeah. it's but it's not like that anymore. Okay, and we 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 had like a reunion, mm -hmm. and we talked about everything. Oh like yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We actually had like conversations of, and like kind of went back and was like, hey, like when this happened, like yeah, I was yeah, thinking this, yeah. and like we had like a little therapy session, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it and and it was very therapeutic, you know, after going through what we went through to to have that. That's and amazing. It, yeah, because that's one thing that people don't assume like women can do sometimes coming together and <laughs> yeah. just being able to like actually talk about stuff what we did and, and yeah. everyone was so mature about it and that that was i learned a lot from us being able to kind of work through that and be like oh this is what i was feeling at the time oh this is what i was feeling and actually yeah. i feel like we came to an understanding where we get where each other was right. mm -hmm. it was just at the time that communication was lacking maybe this member's talking to this member Amazing. and then like opinions are happening it, it was just yeah. it was disjointed and then we were younger yeah. too what yeah. i got what i got from that is like you know they say, you know, some people in your life for a season and you hear that stuff. Right. But like when you go back and you have maturity and growth and, and you can look from things in hindsight, um, what what you guys did was was special. Right. And I Thank think you. every member I haven't talked to every member of the group about it, but I I'm pretty sure you can say like, you know, it made an impact on your life, career, what have Huge. you. You know what I mean? Huge. So take away all the bad stuff looking back on it you know however it played out even with the bad though. even with the bad right? right yeah it played out how it's supposed to play out and you guys got something from it, it internally externally whatever it was so um love that part you know what i'm saying yeah there's <laughs> the a lot about it part. there's a lot about it i love too i definitely yeah. wouldn't be where i am if not for right the yeah. sorority and if not for like that part of our journey there it is shout out sorority yeah um fast forward 2019 let's talk <laughs> about 13th flower okay mm -hmm. first of all that 13th floor, floor. floor. Oh, i'm sorry you you put flower city and <laughs> yeah, my, I, I like it that's the deluxe edition but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first of all that cover art is incredible, yo. That, Thank you. Shout out Adiemi one, one time. Favorite. Well, I'm sorry, who did Shout it? out Adiemi, hey. photographer, yeah, and designer. That Talk to us about that project. Was that a long time in the making that seemed to be a pivotal point in your life? Yeah, what I would say it was a, like a year and a half. Um, I was working on it the entire time that I was uh, touring with the sorority and, and outputting our Pledge album. And then some of the beginning of the following year. Um, yeah, that project literally changed my life. I started working with the team and I... So I had some support that was outside of myself. Yeah. Um, and 
yeah, so I was I had some production that wasn't just me. It wasn't like beats I grabbed on YouTube. So I was like, oh, like this could be real. I was going to studio, like real studio. <laughs> like I wasn't recording with my webcam mic anymore. You know, like <laughs> it was getting real. It was yeah. getting real. And um, yeah, proper artwork, like working with like you know Addy Emmy's an incredible photographer. Um, and then just like like applying for grants for the project, and then trying to get the project once it is out in front of people. Like there's this whole there's a whole step. I remember I learned what a rollout is mm. with Thirteen Floor because okay. I never knew. Like I learned there's so many things you you, you got to do before a project comes out, mm -hmm. during the process where it comes out, and then after. Yes. And I never did that on any project prior. Um, so that really taught me like how to execute the business and. Uh, one of those things was applying for the Polaris. One of those things was, um, I didn't even know the Polaris existed. Like, I don't, I didn't know what that was. <laughs> yeah. um, but a lot of people the team I was working yeah. with, yeah, they were like, you know, there's this thing, this entity, kind of like the Mercury Prize. And I was like, I don't know what that is either. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, well, it recognizes like the best album in Canada. And I was like, well, I'm not going to win that. Yeah. You know? But they were like, you know, but you should apply for these things. If, right. if the album is done in time, like you can right. put it in front of people and there's a panel of people, a jury of people. And I'm like, well, nobody knows who I am. So right. I'm like, not but that's when i started learning this is a part of what this is a part of the thing of, of, of visibility is actually being aware of whether it's corporate infrastructures blog infrastructures mm -hmm. like who like podcasts whatever whoever's reaching the masses and also reaching them so they can share your music with their masses like that whole business side i wasn't aware of it before right, so right. um that's when i started doing that uh or at least having assistance with doing that and yeah, yeah. and the project was long listed and, for the polaris yeah um, just by being included in this pool of of bodies of work and yeah long list was 40 albums wow yeah and then it was shortlisted which was 10 albums i was like nah, that's crazy yeah. nah that's crazy because i i had i didn't have any like big looks like that like yeah i think back in 2010 or something i did like a chris brown remix mm. and i got I, I won that contest and I got flown out to, to New York and I got to go to the Hot 97 show where Trey wow. Songz was performing and Day 26 and Fabulous and all these yeah. all these artists, right? Yeah. That was one of the bigger, and I got my little Twitter nod at right. that time. And then <laughs> yeah, all yeah. the Chris Brown fans, Team Breezy, like those were my fans. And right. that was like my Team first Breezy. little kind of notoriety moment. But like, it was like through socials. It wasn't like, it was for a remix or, you know, it wasn't for like me. This yeah. was the first time. This like, one was your project this is me, that you put in. So and it's much politically work. charged, yes. right? I'm talking about like things that I thought were going to, sh I thought I was shooting myself in the foot, mm. but nobody around me was like, don't do it. Right. So I just had nothing else. I was like, this is it. This is what I feel. This is, you know, and, and so it was when it was long listed and then short listed, I'm like, nah, this is crazy. Like, yeah. this is the most controversial stuff I've ever said. I've written songs like this years ago and I'm like, I can't put that out. <laughs> I can't make a song about mm -hmm. police not yeah. respecting my community. Like, right. that's crazy. Like, you know, so the, to have it be recognized and then to win, like, you know, there were so many incredible artists that were nominated that year from like Shad, I believe, to like, yeah. Starting those Rez kids to, right. to like Jesse Reyes, like it was a lot, you know, right. Do Do Dominique Filzam, like yeah. incredible artist. So that was like, oh, like it was just, it was so life changing from the from a financial perspective because they gave me 50K. So, you know, <laughs> hey. That was my first little like injection of Cap you have capital to reinvest, yeah, yes. nice. right? And and that led to the next project. You need and everything it, for an artist. Right? Oh yeah, yeah like you, yeah, you yeah. need you need capital and there's other ways you gotta, yeah. sometimes you, you, you you, you might feel like you got to get it. And so right. it was great to have at the beginning of my visible career. And I will say, like, in, in, to that point, you know, it's I think it makes it easier to work as an artist when you're not thinking from such a monetary gain. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you can work from a creative point now. Yes. You know what I mean? It relieves some of that pressure. And I think that's when some of the best music comes out. You know, I don't know if we'd have a little Wayne today if Baby wasn't like, yo, I got you. Just come to the studio. Yo, you don't have to worry about nothing else. Just rap, bro. Yeah, you know facts. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And sometimes you need a bit of capital to do that. You know, if you're some artists are able to work through it. But once you have that, uh, I believe that's when your creativity can really shine. Yeah, less yeah. boundaries, less restrictions. Yeah, like yeah. just throw, just throw shit at the wall. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, it definitely helped, especially because COVID hit like less than yeah. six months later. Yeah, you know. Real. So yeah. I started getting. It's all good timing. I would say like the 50k was cool, and very like more than cool. It was great. It was yeah. very, <laughs> it was very instrumental to to reinvest. But bigger than that was that my name was now in a pool yes. of musicians. Mm. And I was so scared of being put in the box of, oh, like this, like this girl that can rap right. uh, from the ciphers, you know? Okay. So within 
two less than two and a half years i had exercise i had max not exercise and not maximize what's the word i'm looking for mm. i had um succeeded uh -huh. in being recognized as an artist, an artist that makes bodies of work yes. and it was literally the one entity that acknowledges body of work based mm -hmm. on artistic merit alone and not sales i was like this is this is this is literally what i believed and manifested and i didn't actually think it could come true but i put everything in it as if it could and then it did, it did. so it definitely changed my my whole perspective on manifesting um and the trajectory after that has literally like the incline has just been this since then so I'm so so grateful for that part of my journey yeah too. Oh, that's amazing so how did that compare to the um the high of the junos huh um very similar i would say yeah yeah you feel more i mean confident because you're like yo i want a polaris prize you know yeah or were you more because confident in your abilities like i was like more confident in my ability than I want a Polaris prize because it was like it wasn't a nod I realized existed before like this thing that I had been dreaming for for many years. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was like something that I became aware of and then I achieved and I knew what it meant. But it more meant it more to me meant oh wow my talent is good enough to achieve something like that. Yeah, yeah. it was more that. Yeah. Um, the Junos is very similar, right? Like yeah. the Junos is more something that I've heard of for, for for many years. So I would say from that perspective, it was a little bit more like I guess recognizable. But the Polaris. I don't know. They're, they're very similar, right? The Junos. Many people win a Juno. Only one person wins a Polaris. Yeah. And in, in a given year. True. So they very they true. both had their like, yo, this is crazy feeling yeah. to it yeah. in a different way. Right. Um. And I think they both kind of give me different type of confidence. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the confidence really at the end of the day is in my ability to rap and tell stories. Mm -hmm. I, like, I I think that um, it lead me to to the question I wanted to ask because. I was with you at the Junos in Halifax yeah. that just happened. We got to link up and I saw your performance and it was great. And, you know, to see you, uh, you know, win a couple Junos and be a part of it. And like, I only won one, by the way. Sorry, only yeah. one. Nominated should have been more, twice, but right? <laughs> could have been nominated more. Multiple nominated multiple I should we working on yeah, it, right? Yeah, right? Nominated but three times, three times? technically four. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. And, and, you know, I'm just going to address the elephant in the room of how black music has been portrayed, you know, when it comes to the Junos and stuff like that. So I'm always curious, right? I'm thinking to the beginning of, you know, the Rascals winning and, and mm. not being televised and them kind of boycotting the Junos and, mm. you know, and Maestro winning the first one. And, you know, it's always been this kind of weird relationship with, yeah. with hip hop and, and the Junos, yeah. you know, because we want it to be our Grammys, but we really, f there's always been this thing where it's like, we're not getting the praise that we deserve, you know? And when we have the number one genre of music in the world, in my opinion, that everybody listens to, and, you know, to see our awards not be televised or, or kind of not give it the, the, the platform it deserved, it's always been weighing on my heart, you know? So when I went to Halifax this past year, I really felt like um, we were here, you know what I'm saying? Like seeing my show being celebrated to, um, 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 Toby, you know, winning mm. and like the events. Shout out and, Maestro, shout out Toby. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And like, I don't know, it felt, for me, the energy felt different. I've never had the experience of, you know, winning a, a one. So I don't know what it's like for you when you're actually nominated and winning because I watched you in Toronto celebrate, you know what I'm saying? And going yeah. on stage and give a great speech and have that part being televised. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit more about your overall Juno experience and what do you think I don't want to lead or anything, but what do you think is, what is your vibe on the Junos? Yeah, I mean, my Juno experience, I think it was my third time going. Um, I initially did like a program called the Juno Masterclass, right. which was, oh, now I realize that business, you know? Yeah. So I took, I took a program that, or I applied and got in a program where it was like, this is the stuff that will help you be the type of artist that could be recognized by an entity like this. Uh, I did that in 2018, same time I was doing the sorority. And um, yeah, I remember thinking like, I was trying to get 13th floor nominated for a Juno, right? Cause right. that wasn't my, well, I was in my business mindset and mm -hmm. it was right. not, it was not uh, nominated even. Right. I was like, interesting. <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember thinking that, I was like, interesting. How do you yeah. win a Polaris, but you don't get nominated for Right, but then I also thought like, can you, maybe there's a conflict of like, if you get one, maybe you, they don't want to give it, give you the other because right. it's just like it's a little bit too much uh, space you take it up <laughs> right, right, or like you know there's only yeah. so many 
I don't know. Like, I don't know exactly why it was. Um, I was like, is it a sales metric? Because, like, obviously Polaris is more based on artistic merit. And then for Junos, I was like, how much of it is based on sales? I don't right, know. Right. And, like, my streams maybe aren't contending with other people's. Right. I, I think at that time, they definitely weren't. Right. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't nominated. That project wasn't nominated. But the project I put out next was called Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. And... I was I was actually in the hospital when it when it dropped. Oh, for real? Yeah, wow. like I yeah. I got super sick. I don't even I, to this day I don't I know how that. it happened. Yeah. Um, I think it was something to do with the, the them vaccinations. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. I think my immunity mm -hmm. took a real hit at the time when I started retouring, mm -hmm. and shortly after um, getting my vaccination. Uh, I got really, really ill. I don't oh, know if it was tied to it or not, okay. but I got really, really ill while right. I was in Wales in the UK. Oh, oh wow. wow. And uh, yeah, I started having these crazy symptoms and I ended up having a blood infection when oh, I came back. And it, it, I think it was just, there was a lot of things. Um, we were in the house, locked in the house. And then it was like, all right, now you on a road, go to Quebec, play two shows in a day. Now you're here, now you're there, right? So it was like, now you're out, you're being exposed to the environment, oh, all these germs yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I had to get my shot so I could keep playing these shows yep. and make this money, you know? Yep. And then I, I got very sick after that while I was still on the road in the UK playing back-to-back -back shows. So I think it was just too much yeah. on my body. And uh, I ended up getting a, a blood infection, mm -hmm. which turned into a heart infection. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, it moved to my heart. And so it was called endocarditis, which is like inflammation of the... Of the heart? Of uh, the endocarditis, which is a layer of the heart. Oh, wow. And then that led to led, led to brain strokes. Mm. What? Yeah, yeah. Shit. All of that was happening when like when I dropped Stock Exchange. I was supposed to have a release party. Oh wasn't God. able to have that. So when it was nominated for the Junos, I was like, nah. Cause like the project that was so like ahead of, like in terms of like, I'm doing everything right. I it didn't get the acknowledgement. And then this project, but I was like still recovering when it got nominated. So I was just wow. not like present yeah mm -hmm. when that happened yeah, right but i was like wow this is crazy like yeah. i guess it's moving even though i'm not moving like yeah. the tracks were moving yeah. but you know it was a cool project i i it was like uh, we put out a single every month so i had a lot of high visibility yep. over that year I before i got that. ill so yep. i just think that i planted a lot of seeds and the, 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 pre the previous project had won the polaris so yeah it did the groundwork for me but yeah i just yeah, yeah. i didn't expect to get the nom at right. all okay um and then shortly after getting the nomination i was asked to perform mm. so that was just a lot of like yo like i wasn't even like that well when i was asked i was like yo like i gotta work out i gotta um and yeah i became aware just talking to other people in the industry behind the scenes of like a lot of the, even in Juno Masterclass, we was talking about it, mm -hmm, just like mm -hmm. how hip hop has been not, Polaris too, Polaris too. And a lot of these bigger entities, you know, with Polaris, Polaris it was first, I became aware of it because it's like all these rock bands, four dudes, four white yeah. guys in a rock band, like that's who normally wins the Polaris. Yeah. And, yeah. and then it started pivoting, you know? Um, and so that energy that was being discussed, you know, years and years of, you know, Drake, like, hosting and being snubbed and nominated so many oh times my and, God. you know stuff like that and you know he's like i'm never gonna do this shit again yeah, like, i remember man. i had the little context of am i supposed to align with you know those before me my predecessors yeah, and be yeah. like yo fuck this shit but i'm like okay it's a new era it's whatever i'm gonna just go into this and try to take up space yeah. try to bring my black ass on the stage and talk about black shit and have black dancers and do all my black shit like yeah. that was my vibe right yeah, like let yeah. me just Oh, do you what? did that. I, you did that. I, yeah. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate you it. That. I really yeah. tried, you know? And, yeah, yeah. and, um, it was present and we needed it. So I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. And yeah. it was, and it was televised. Right. 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 That was, um, that was like just different than previous years. Did they not? Say like, uh, Havaya, come here for a sec. I mean, we, we love you, Havaya, but what you're doing right now is might be a little bit of a issue for us. No, there was oh, none of that. like like the performance like, itself. Like, no, no, that's what's crazy. I okay. feel like I feel like th those were the Me Too years. Like right. the, like those were the, the right. Maybe there's a little bit more expression or something, yeah. but like nobody told me because I performed a song called Protest, right? And then another song called So So. So So is like you know I don't I don't need no mediocre like underdog mentality. I'm on my shit. Mm -hmm. And then I went into a song called Protest, um, that's very much about the 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 difficulties with the black community and law enforcement. It's inspired by that, but also goes into a lot of different topics. Yes, I talk about the history of Nova Scotia in that song as well. Um, so. Sorry, that distracted me. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. They're just talking about secret missions that are happening. <laughs> That's okay, um, Alicia. Shout out, Alicia. 
Yeah. Okay, peace. Yeah. Yo, shout out Aria. Hey. But yeah, no, I they didn't they try didn't. to police that's what great. I what I had to say. Good. Um, which I don't know if that's luck. I'm sure so many other people were policing what they had to say, but right, like right. it was like my involvement uh was almost like a shift. Mm, it felt yeah. like mm -hmm. um it felt like I was also the first black woman to be nominated and or win that category. But I ain't the flat first I'm not the first black woman to be doing what I'm doing. So like yeah. that was also a conflict in, mm. internally of like, damn, well, that's crazy what I'm accomplishing. But at the same time, what does that say about where we are if I'm the first? Yeah. You know what I mean? There was yeah. a lot of that happening mentally. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's interesting because like that year it was televised. My my messages were not policed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was nominated for a project that definitely challenged some societal some societal norms yep. and racial norms. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um. And then the year after that, I was asked to be a part of the the 50 years of hip hop speech right. with with Cardi, and That's we right. acknowledged some of the issues that have been carrying over for years, mm -hmm. like the rascals and not not the visibility that wasn't there and, right, and yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. But then 2024 this year is like. The hip hop categories were, were not, televised not televised this year. Yeah, and make sense. but but Maestro was given you know the the, the tribute. My, this is where my confusion line. comes yeah. in, right? right? So it's like they're giving us some, but they're taking like what what's happening? Right. That, this is what I'm saying. So like yeah. for me, I'm like okay, like it's like I don't know what's happening on the back end or who's behind right. the scenes. Right. But I, I, of course, just from my involvement, and then like. This year I was nominated by I didn't win, but I'm there, right? Yeah. I'm I'm in, I'm less involved, right. right? I'm in the I'm in the audience. I'm not yeah. backstage, you know. Right. And I'm really watching the entire show, and I'm like, wow, like, oh, like they they the the hip hop categories were in the non televised portion, both of them, which I was nominated in, in both of them, and I was just like, oh, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. That is not televised because now I was having that same feeling that I've heard about over the years of like, how come? And I don't know what led to that decision. Yeah, like there were also yeah. other things that I noticed. Of, Would you have a a perspective or an answer going forward if you could do anything or give any advice i don't so see how hip-hop could not be in my opinion there should never not be a hip-hop category to, on the televised junos it right. doesn't make sense yeah, yeah. it does to me that doesn't make sense so i would feel like if the year 2022 where i performed was a year where we saw all the nominees on the big screen we they got that moment even if they weren't the winner of that category right. i don't really and I can't remember in 2023, I think, was it the same? But like, I know in 2024 it wasn't. To me, it doesn't really make sense that hip hop is not acknowledged for the viewers at home that are yeah. kicked up. Yeah. We're watching, you know? It's like, we have incredible musicians that are being acknowledged in other categories. And it almost makes it seem like hip hop is not prevalent right? when yeah. it's not acknowledged by the biggest entity within Canada. So for me, that felt like a slight setback. Yes. It's not that I didn't win that was a setback, although maybe I should have took some <laughs> home. I, yeah, I I'm just playing. I it was just the fact that nobody that did, like Toby won both of those awards. Right. Why was that not on TV? Yeah. So I do yeah. think that that was a missed opportunity there, 100%. Yeah. And for me, it's like, ooh, like is what's happening on the back end shifting? Is it that there were um, more people like pivoting or pushing that goalpost forward involved in previous years and now it's shifting again? Like, I don't really know. Yeah. But, you know, okay. as an artist, I definitely think as a hip hop artist, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I missed the mark a little bit, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, mean, yeah I feel yeah. like it's it's a, a combination of the old guard still being in the infrastructure of media and music, and it can't last forever. You know, our generation is eventually. Yeah, I've been is, saying is that since two thousand three. It can't last forever, but I mean, we're here in twenty twenty. No, it's a different. It was a, a different world back then. Yeah, it's yeah. a different world, and that's true. And hip hop was not where it is today, and it's people in our generation are becoming in positions of power and eventually that all has to unfold hopefully in our lifetime we're seeing i'm hopeful mm. that we will see it in our lifetime but uh it's up to people like Kavaya, you know you know you're, you're carrying <laughs> the torch um but i we're hearing a lot of accolades a lot of highlights a lot of successes but that obviously comes with some downtime you know with mm. some with some points in your life that might have not been the most positive mm. and going through struggles um i want to ask is there a rock bottom moment in your journey over here moisturizing it's... my lips for, the, <laughs> for this moment this heavy moment um i, I don't want to say rock bottom okay. i mean hopefully it was because i would never want to go back there yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um a version of a rock bottom yeah i had some difficult internal times mm -hmm. yeah for sure mm -hmm. that um affected not my ability to do this but i had to change things or it would have 
Yeah. Was it mental health? Was it relationships? It was it was a relationship. It was mostly a relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would also say my sexuality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um kind of collectively those two things and covid okay all at the same that's, time that's yeah that's a lot that was a ton yeah. yeah all of that at the same yeah, time that's a lot. um just trying to pivot that and yeah. trying to understand myself through the one of the weirdest times any of us went through mm -hmm. um there was a you know a lot of divide with how people feel about stuff at, yeah. at that time as well so um yeah the, it, it led to mental health yeah being affected and then that obviously leads to your confidence being affected. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that reflects off of your last project. You have a project, um, Crying Crystals. Yes. You know, and that seems to be very relationship based. It is. Is that mm. based on the relationship that you're referencing right now? 100%. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And do you feel like that was like a therapeutic project to clo have closure? In yeah. that toxic relationship from what it sounds like yeah yeah mm. that project was so uh essential to me um because yeah like a lot of those a lot of the things growing up the awareness wasn't there when it came to a lot of things and that was a time where i had to be painfully aware of everything that was happening around me yeah. my career was starting to take off so i was aware of the perception of me yeah. but then this relationship was starting to not take off yeah. and then the perception of me and that dynamic was also so different than what was yeah. happening in the like publicly but this this is both the real world so you're dealing with that and then yeah. you know my sexuality and not being out you know this person mm -hmm. was a woman nobody yeah. even knew so there was so much of like i can't tell anybody why they got all these singers outside? <laughs> let me get let me get up somebody else got <laughs> <laughs> no you good you good you good you're referencing your sexuality and i'm, I'm happy you're, you're referencing it because i and i know we are very curious that must have not been an easy thing growing up from what sounds like a strict household. You're also in uh, one of the most competitive uh, genres of music, a very male dominated mm -hmm. uh, genre of music that has only like, you have to be one type of sexuality mm -hmm. kind of stigma mm -hmm. around it. Yeah. How did that affect you? I think it still affected me, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'd say the way it's infect affecting me now is like just leaning so heavily on what I feel and not allowing it to pull me away from who I am but I think again the lack of awareness <laughs> like the way I grew up I was so disconnected from who I could be outside of what I learned that when I first started having feelings for this person that was that I was in a relationship with I was like I ain't gay I just like this one person mm. I'm not in a girl that's crazy the concept of that was crazy <laughs> and nobody could tell me different okay I'm sure everybody knew how I presented it I was like not nah, nah, that bitch gay but I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know and it's crazy because there's an aspect of trauma that I don't identify with with the whole LGBTQ space yeah, right. because I didn't know okay I you know like you see you see and hear me talk a lot about what it is like to be a black young woman in Canada. Yes. But being a young black queer woman right. yeah. is a bit more of a new discussion for me mm -hmm. because yeah. I didn't even realize just how much that was a part of like that weirdness of that separation of that, maybe that disconnect with other people. Like I was so just unaware. It was so deep rooted and so deep seated. Mm. Yeah. And I'm Caribbean. Like my dad is Jamaican, my mom is Bayesian. So like, absolutely not. You yes. know what I mean? Like yes. it wasn't even an option to consider right. for so long. Right. Um, and you didn't even consider it in your own brain. Yeah. Which no, to, to the point where I literally basically had a girl and I was like, nah. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Uh. And and like it, it actually took her because like what, there was one day she was like, yo, what what type of girls do you like? And I was like, I was offended. Yeah. I was like, what type of girls do I like? I just like you. What do you? Do? And she was offended. She was like, Ugh. like, I think for her it was just so obvious how inexperienced I was and how much I had to learn and how much of a rift that was gonna cause us yeah. because for her it's like you can't even dictate what type of girls you like and you about to be a rapper mm. what happens when <laughs> what happens when you what happens when you go out there and all these shorties throw themselves at you it's just so much you don't even know what to do with it like yeah. i think for her it was like yeah. i can't follow you on this journey of of, of ignorance is bliss right. yeah and allow myself to get more and more wrapped up in you and you don't even know who you are Gosh. Right. And there was and there was like points of contention of like, you're pushing me away. I felt like this shorty was pushing me away. Right. But, I, you know, hindsight I, in a sight, she in a, in a yeah, hindsight in yeah. a way she kind of was. But I think like in like when I look back now, like the person that I am now, this is like nine days. Like right. I don't even recognize who I was then. I was so, so unaware. How uh, 
were your parents ever suspicious and how was it when you went when you told them uh no i think there was in as much denial as i was right. really? they right, should have right. known yeah. right they should have known <laughs> like i was always a tomboy you know right, like right, i always right. You know, I commend them on not trying to change my expression and not tying it to what my sexuality could be or trying to, especially because in that kind of strict environment, mm -hmm. you think a Jamaican dad would be like, you better put on that dress, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But like, they might have made comments here and there, but like, I was like not the kid like that wanted to wear the dress and I kind of didn't have to, you know? Okay. So they let me be my little tomboy self. Okay. Um, fuck, what was the question? Uh, how was <laughs> it when you broke it up to yeah. them that, when you told them? Okay, so, so when I told them, I told my dad first, which is like insane. Like, what was I thinking? Whoa. But the day, the day that it happened, I got in a big argument with this this person I was in a relationship with. At this time, we were no longer in a relationship, right? But a big point of contention of why we weren't working out, I feel like was because we were like in a secret thing. And I was starting to come to terms with how big of an impact that was having on anybody's ability to be themselves. And I I just felt this heavy weight. I had been feeling this weight for a long time. I actually first came out to my sister's husband. Oh wow! Okay. He's my tour manager now. Shout out Drew one time. Hey, Drew, hey, hey, he was hey, the hey. first person I ever told um, because he. I just knew he would have the room for it, and he yeah. was like family, but not yeah. family. Right. So he wasn't so tied to her. Right. Like, Unbiased <laughs> opinion. You're right? my third cousin twice yeah, yeah. removed, so you. Ain't you know what I'm saying? Like it was little, a bit, yeah. little bit like that, that and yeah, he so. he really you know, created a safe space for me. But yeah, the, 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 I just was having a literal mental breakdown. Okay. The day that I went home, I was like, I was just in that, like, like I could do something. Mm -hmm. I could do something like not good to myself space yeah. at that moment. Yeah. And I just felt this weight on my chest. And I went home and I was like, I'm going to tell my mom. I just, I was like, I'm going to, but she wasn't fucking home, bro. Mm. <laughs> she wasn't home. And I just had already committed. Yeah. yeah. I already told myself, I'm going to tell somebody. Yeah. So, and my dad was in the kitchen. Yeah. And he was like in a uh -oh. chill mood. And he's like, what's up, my daughter? And mm. I was just like, oh, oh boy. Y'all sit down And the it? tears came <laughs> out. And I literally, it just, I blubbered it. It blubbered it out. Like yeah. I, and I was crying and sobbing and like, I think I'm this, I think I'm, I like women. And I, like, I just, it was like that. It was literally like that. Wow. And um, yeah, I think, I think, it, I think, it, I think at first it like was, it was just a bombshell, which makes me think he maybe never really considered it really. Um, I don't even think he verbally answered me at the time. I okay. think he just, it just hit him and he just kept doing whatever he was doing, but I could, <laughs> I could see, see like it? my dad's yeah. a Pisces, you know. Oh, mm -hmm. I think for him, he just went to like, where did I go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you know, where did I? I just don't think he understood. Um, denial, maybe. I don't even know if he was in denial. Okay. I he didn't try to change my mind ever. Okay. okay. You know, he just. I don't think he knew what to say. Maybe. Yeah. When when my mom came home, I told her after that I told my dad because I was like, he's gonna tell you. So yeah, I'm I gotta tell, you, tell you. Yeah. And she was more like, it's probably a phase, and like, and I was kind of like, I. Right. But in my mind, I'm like, Same. now that I'm here, I know yeah, it's not. Right. I know it's not. It's right. been it's been a few years, mom. I've done some things you wouldn't approve of. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. It was, it was it was it was a very interesting time. Um. Yeah. And overall, it just they started to accept it. And I, and yeah, it's it's interesting. Ever since I, after I came out, I don't think we've ever had like a real like heart to heart about okay, it. Right. But my mom and my dad got my back to the end of the road. That's amazing. Like I can still feel it. Yeah. Sometimes my dad will talk to me and it's like I know what he's trying to say. He's like, you know, he's so wisdom filled, you know. <laughs> you know, Avaya, my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, not, I don't agree with everything you do, you know, but I love you, my like he's mm -hmm. and I know yeah. I'm like I know exactly, exactly what you mean yeah. that because I'm very much a splitting image of him except for that maybe right, like yeah. i'm so like my dad like mm -hmm. i'm like almost a dude like my dad like mm -hmm. i give off the same energy like i give off the same prowess you right. know like i'm very much his daughter right. i was probably supposed to be his son mm -hmm. but then like something happened and mm -hmm. like it only came out of my sexuality but not in my actual <laughs> actual dna yeah. my brother was the next one right, he, he right. finally got his boy you know <laughs> but yeah they have shown i think i taught them a lot about how far they can come as parents because mm. i don't think they ever thought what would i do if i had to deal with this right and i feel like they've overcome you know my dad's literally ra born and raised in jamaica you know yeah. you know how they think you know what they've taught what they're taught you know what they believe and he's like so there yeah. my mom is so there yeah. that i it, we don't have to have a conversation 
That's like, that. we don't have to have a direct conversation for yeah. me to know that it doesn't matter how I, like, I, everything they've taught me, they can see I'm living that truth. Mm -hmm. And it may come with some caveats that aren't what they taught me, but yeah. they can see that that doesn't matter. And just, You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think they've learned a lot from me and I've learned a lot from them yeah, too. Yeah, I love that. That's dope. I really yeah. do. That's yeah. really dope. I'm glad you had that space right now, man. I'm and you had lucky. the courage to blubber it out to him when you did, you yeah, know? for real. There yeah. was a time when I was like, I, I could never come right. back. There was a time when I did I did become aware and I was like, I, I could never. Like, I would be right. disowned. Like, I'd never. Mm -hmm. So to be able to come this far also taught me how strong mentally I could be for yes. myself. Very true. Yes. Yeah. I know we're going to the uh, to the end of our segments here, but I, yeah. I know there was one question. You as a musician, you were talking about the landscape of Canada, right? Yes. And the Canadian artists living in Canada and all that. You want to you wanna ask? Uh, I just feel like... Um, I was thinking more of like just the living situation as a Torontonian, yes, and, and Canadian, yes, right? And where it's going, you mm. know? We always joke about the price and inflation and the fact that, you know, butter is like $8 right now, <laughs> and you know? And as somebody who's kind of traveled uh, around the world and kind of seen um, different walks of life, some people never get the opportunity to go outside of Toronto or Ontario or anything like that. Um, so how do you feel about the trajectory of what this city is 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 doing right now you know and in and terms of in terms of just living right in wow. terms of the arts in terms of like would you would you want to uh migrate to another country do you do you feel like you know canadian is uh canada is where you might uh retire you know do you feel like because mm. a lot of people are there's there's this wave of people or who are working um remotely right in other places but still have canadian addresses you know and there's people who just feel like you know what i'm done with this country yeah, right I hear now. That every you know day, yeah. yeah like i'm yeah. done yo you know and i've i've thought about it myself multiple times where it's just like yo i could just cut i, I, I need to just, like maybe the same for me because the toronto i see now isn't the toronto i grew up in anymore you uh, know yeah so i just i was just curious to see like how you feel about w what's going on right now yeah, I mean, definitely a lot has changed. It's like, I, I, I don't have a, I haven't made a decision. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. made a decision on where I'm going to end up. I definitely think there's an essence to Toronto, especially after COVID, that feels like we've lost a little bit of that in right. the community space, in the, mm. in the art space. But then there's also changes that I'm seeing that I didn't notice before. Right. Um especially in like the queer space right. mm -hmm. and the parties that are happening in the city. There's like a lot of that. Oh yeah. Um, but I don't know if that's just specific to the queer space mm -hmm. or what. Um, Weather-wise, mm -hmm. finance-wise, mm -hmm. I mean, Tio could go, you know? Right, like, right. Because I think there was a stat that came out that Toronto's more expensive to live now than Miami or New York, or it's at least on par with that type of level. And this is a recent stat that just came out that's you know? insane right yeah. nah because you can't it's not even warm year round you can't right. do that like, <laughs> can't you have to have it. the you have to have climate on your side i think you in order to be charging them type it. of prices you right know what I mean? yeah. like, facts I, it's, it's tough man like, i don't know if you thought about it and i just want to I had, toronto that, was unaffordable yeah. right toronto is like it, it, it it's Borderline, unaffordable absolutely. i don't even live inside the city right. partly because i think too much visibility mm. but also the affordability like the lifestyle i'd have to chance to I just I'm not willing to do it. do it. I'm not gonna right. do it to live in yeah. like a little shoebox type 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 situation because I'm not Jeez. minimalist enough. I like a lot of things. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, nice. I, I haven't thought about exactly where I'm gonna end up. It's definitely right. something I've thought about, mm. but like without an answer. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So let me ask you this: What about crazy, right? you got nominated for a BT? You got some US. You got some great US visibility. Yeah. You've been on Sway in the Morning a couple yeah. of times. Right as a musician and a Canadian musician. On the radar, fire. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, do you feel like you could still make it being here or going to the US? Have you seen like, oh, this is 10 times bigger in a marketplace? It's like, I think the biggest thing is that I'm an independent artist, right? I've been an independent artist all this time. I've never had label backing, mm -hmm. which means I don't have advances mm -hmm. that I'm just sitting on capital that will allow me to go to another region i just don't think that like the way i'm reinvesting in my music now mm -hmm. i i don't i think that i would sacrifice something yeah financially for sure for sure i would have to sacrifice financially what i can put in the music mm -hmm. to make a move like that yeah and i just 
think there's more groundwork I gotta do. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I could reach more listeners here. I can travel to the US mm -hmm. and it's gonna be, like I can kind of do that dual thing as opposed to, to leaving. Mm. I feel like in order to relocate, you gotta have capital. You gotta really yeah. be able to like support yourself. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put myself in a, an environment where my mental health is taking hits because I'm not yeah. living in an environment. Mm -hmm. I'm bougie. Yeah. And I'm not <laughs> living in an environment that supports yeah. the ability to create music whenever I want right. yeah. at the expense of maybe being closer to maybe more collaborative opportunities or networking Climate. or whatever. It's yeah. just like, I think there's a con that comes with that pro. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just don't, I think it's like, I, like, you know, the term excitable. Like, I think mm. if I was to make that move right now, mm -hmm. I think it would be because I'm excitable and not necessarily because it's the best strategic mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot more work I can do here. Mm -hmm. And I think that the U.S. is a huge target for me. Mm -hmm. But I think I can still target the U.S. and travel there. And in and, 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 and that way, yeah, I could save a little bit of money Dope. as opposed to making a decision, you know? Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm from here. Like, I feel like not enough people know my name here for mm -hmm. me to actually up and leave, leave. like, right now. I, yeah. You know, and I'm hoping soon, like, we, we, we are laying the infrastructure. We are working every yeah. day. <laughs> but, yeah, I just, like, I'm, I don't know. I just, I just think I, I, I don't got enough money or, yeah. like, guaranteed music success for me mm -hmm. to, like, make a big move like that. I feel like my biggest moves are, like, music plays. What am I working on? Like right now, I'm I'm working on music plays. Yeah. I'm in the studio trying to think about what have, what have I what have I not done? Yeah. I've reached a lot of people, but I also haven't reached a lot of people. Right. What am I not doing that is preventing me from reaching those people mm -hmm. and focusing on that? Because music goes over social media. You can send music across the world through the internet. Right. I don't have to move somewhere to be able to make more impact before I make that move. I just sure. I think that there's steps before that step for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day, especially because the climate. Yeah. But I think I got to more seeds. So if the opportunity presents itself, um, maybe with a, a label that has the right opportunity or the right financial backing. Listen, you would we're not trying it. to kick Hawaii out of Canada <laughs> at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know we're trying to keep her. Stop leading. We're trying to keep her. Sir. You know what I mean? We want her here. I'm just saying. No, but like if there was an opportunity, yeah, it's like maybe you never know but the opportunity's yeah. got to be perfect yeah. okay like i know the type of artist i am i'm very very i'm, I'm aware labels i know <laughs> like i'm not it's just got to be something where we both gonna benefit yeah. from each other yeah and i don't know if a label can give me what i want without mm -hmm. taking what i don't want to give right. and yeah. i don't know if a label sees me as the type of artist that can give them what they want without question True. or like with you know like i don't think i'm I, I've I've not had difficult a lot of difficulty working with the people that I work with, yeah. but I don't think I'm like the most compliant, bendable, moldable artist. I have things I want to say, yeah. I have messages I want to share, and sometimes when it comes to labels, especially with females in hip hop, there are blueprints, yeah. and the blueprint. I don't think there's a blueprint for me. Yeah, I've actually been told layman's terms. There ain't no blueprint for you. We don't really know what to do with that, yeah. <laughs> right? And it's like, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna conform that yeah. because going back to the origin of our conversation those things that set you apart, that lack of awareness, all these things are also the reason that I get the success that I get now. Yes. It's that catch 22 of what makes me different and what is giving me success mm -hmm. also makes the label be like, nah. And that tells me that's not my path right now. If it yeah. becomes my path, I will, I will entertain a conversation right. and they'll start to say the things that I need to hear to know I'm not selling my rights or I'm not gonna deal with people that are gonna try to change my sound in a way that I'm not okay with. Like, you know, like I just, no, it's, it's I'm very much about not swimming mm -hmm. against the current. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if the current is going this way, yeah. Like so, if a label comes and everything's flowing that way, I'm gonna go with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but if yeah. there's anything that doesn't feel right, yeah. I'm not. I'm gonna go where it feels right. I'm gonna trust my intuition. So, yeah. wherever that is, as long as I'm making music at the end of it, whoever it's with, like I plan to get to the very very top. I love you know? amazing. Man. Swimming against the current is one of my favorite quotes as yeah. well. I say it all the time. Yeah. I'll put you on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. I don't do it. Taoism. Yeah. So uh what's next for Hawaii and Mighty? What's going on? What what's what's the big things for 2024 for you? Yeah, I mean next big thing is I'm going on a Euro trip. True. I'm going on a Euro trip. Um When is it? A, well, I'm tr I'm touring Europe. Okay. So, I'm playing with the, I'm opening for Shabazz Palaces for like 13 shows, and then I also have like three nice. other shows condensed into 20 days. So you know we are, Whoa, we are yeah. working. We are working. Summertime? No, I'm leaving May 1st. Okay. Yeah, right uh, yeah. I, I I don't know when this is gonna come out, but it will be announced by then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's gonna be crazy. We're going to like Brighton, uh, Manchester, Leeds, uh, Berlin, Jeez. Cheshire. Mm. Prague, like a lot of places. That's amazing. It's gonna be really, Congrats. really cool. Jalapeno yeah. hot. 
<laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, so that's gonna be really exciting. That's what's happening next. You know, I'm working on some new songs. I feel like I already got the next single in the tuck. You know, so nice. just figuring out how to make sure that that's you know the rollout. You know, learn how yeah, to roll yeah. out. We I gotta roll that it. out. Let yep. people hear a little bit of the, the, the new sound that I'm working mm -hmm. on, um, and yeah, also a lot of people don't know this, but like I had a tough end of year last year. Like okay. I. My management situation fell apart. Okay. And so that's never we've been talking about my story, right? Yeah. I've been working with the same team or the same people, I guess technically the same person since 2018. Oh, that's tough. Yeah. That's and, tough. and actively in 2019. Yeah. And so, like, that ended at the end of last year in a way that very much surprised me okay. and in a way that very much left me stranded. Oh, um, okay. And so, I had to sit back and, like, literally just learn how to manage my business while I worked on not shooting myself in the foot, not trying to like jump into a new situation mm -hmm. that didn't make sense, not trying to make moves like that. You know what I mean? Like I just had to really be patient and be like, okay, what do I want to do right now? What do I need to? So I'm, I'm just, I'm just working with a new situation right now that feels like the right situation. I had to wait for it to fall into place. I had to let yeah. manifestation happen. I had to let authenticity roll. And all of that is now leading to me finally being able to re-strategize. I feel like I had to take six months off mm. of planning. Mm -hmm. Like, and so yeah, I'm like jumping right back in. And so a lot of people might be like, oh, Havai is lazy. She puts an album out every once a year or once every two years. It's like it's not lazy. Bro, yeah, I got a studio in my basement. Like I I really there was a lot of stuff, you know, like the the momentum I'm about to have, people are not ready for it, I feel. Hey. Because okay. the infrastructure I had really supported me in a lot of ways, but yeah. it was very much focused on learning the back end and then learning the business and almost like losing that side of me that mm -hmm. was always cooking. Yes. And I refound that in the last six months of like, oh shit, I've been doing all this business, busy stuff, touring, things I never did before is so active. Like yeah. I don't even have the energy yeah. that I forgot that I gotta cook every day. Mm -hmm. I forgot that mm -hmm. I got a chef every day. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't I'm gluten free vegetarian. I ain't got nobody else to do <laughs> I need to do it every day. And like so I'm I'm finding that energy again and then I'm finding it with people who are supporting that. And now I'm at a place, you know, just timing where I have enough money that I don't have to say yes to every financial bag opportunity. Ooh, right, right, right. Whereas in the beginning of my career, it's like whenever a show came through, I felt like, oh shit, I should probably do it because I'm broke and <laughs> it's going to support the next album. Now yeah. I'm at that place where it's like, okay, but now you need to make music for the next mm -hmm. album and you have enough in the tuck that you don't have to say yes to every opportunity that literally sucks your energy dry and then you ain't got no creativity left. So I feel like I'm in a beautiful place yes. and it's hard to get there when you're independent, mm. you know what I mean? Like where I'm, I, unless you know, you making money other ways. And I didn't want to tie myself, I never wanted to find, I never wanted to find myself in a situation where I, and luckily enough, I didn't have to, right. but I never wanted to have to tie myself to getting bread in a way that would could take away from the music in another way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about your new situation now? Like it seems it's like- It's so new. Yeah. I feel very good about it, okay. but it's so new. Yeah. Um, but mental health wise, yes. it feels great because, you know, I'm communicating very openly what I think has worked. And I'm, you know, I'm still very grateful to, for the for the previous situation that I had, you know, while the, 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 the ending of it was crazy and don't rock with it at all. Yeah. There was a lot of stuff that we did that I'm very, very grateful for and, and was so instrumental to my journey. But I'm also trying to learn from my mistakes. Like what, what wasn't I doing? Or like mm. you know, I, I feel like I, I again I'm learning more about maybe like yourself. Yeah, and like I, I now know how the music industry works as right, well, right. especially over the last yeah. six months. The way I had to handle the emails, the way I had to, I had to deal with. They're hitting me up. They're like, "Do you want to clear the sync license?" Yeah. Da, da, da. I'm like, "How do I?" Yeah. <laughs> do, yes. I'm talking directly yeah. with the lawyer, so I learned yeah. a lot about how to really be the CEO, CEO behind the scenes. So yeah. now I have a new situation, but I'm so much more involved, yeah. and it's I, I think it's helping me a lot to where. I'm now realizing oh, what I wasn't doing as well that could contribute to yeah. just more longevity in this game. That's amazing because I, I think even though I don't know how the ending of your last management um, relationship was, whether, however tumultuous it was, um, you cannot let anybody manage your business if you don't even know your business. Mm. And the fact that you were a, you had to learn everything yourself will empower you for the rest of your journey mm -hmm. to be able I actually know what the sync terms is i know what perpetuity means i know mm. what this event i know all this terminology so for me to give you the keys to this kingdom i'm building and helping me build it together you need to understand it 
and I need to understand it. So that seemed like a blessing. Oh man, it's know? so like I thought I was because I thought I was so aware. That's the theme of this whole interview. Is like I lacked awareness one on one. Like <laughs> I thought I was so aware because I was I was very involved in ways that I think a lot of artists aren't. Why this is why this part right here I think a lot of artists need to hear because I. I was more involved than a lot of people and I, I didn't know shit. Mm. Like there was so much I didn't know that when I had to deal with it directly, I was like, oh my God, like, and I also, you know, I, I, I consider myself to be like, kind of like, you know, like I'm kind of good with paperwork and I'm decent at writing things myself. So a lot of people that, you know, they're just the artists, they just go in the booth and they just cook yeah. up and they, they're not, not the type to be doing essays and all that. And I just think a lot of it could go over your head. There's so many bags you'll miss if you don't either know how to find that yourself or have the right people in there to find it for you. Even when you think you know. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, I saw you. It's okay, the all mic good, is all good. The mic will, yeah. You're good, you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I thought I knew Damn, it gets louder. I know, I know. <laughs> it really like <laughs> picks up. I thought, I thought I knew. Geo got it. Yeah, you good? Yeah, I thought I knew. I thought I knew a lot more than I did. Um, and so yeah, like I would just you know encourage a lot of artists to start to think about if you could think about it before you have it implemented, that's better, right? Yeah, but if yeah. you have to work backwards, even work backwards. Like, what are yeah. the terms of a sync license, or or what are neighboring rights or mechanical rights. I mean, there's still so many things that I'm, I still got to ask questions about actively all of the time. Yes. Um, it's not like I know everything, but yeah, div knowing a lot of that helps you understand how you can diversify your income, how you can, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about some things with, you know, you working yep. with- um, Cut the lights. Cut the book. lights. Yep. Yeah, and like just doing kind of like a different play yes. and focusing on sync and having that not necessarily be so tied to the, to the Rochester brand. That's right. But it could be, quite possibly a, a bigger stream of revenue depending on how you, I mean, Sync is a big revenue stream if you do it right. That's right. Yeah. Um, and that's something I learned. I was like, oh, that's how much I'm making on Sync? Cool. Like, um, also, like, understanding how much money I'm making so I can understand what I'm generating. I can understand yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what, so, what sort of plays make more sense. It's like, if yeah. you do this and put this on SiriusXM, right. this is the type of money you can generate monthly right. from a move like that versus if you do something on TikTok, that's what maybe only going to give you this or a I lot of these. I really like what you said there because like you said you were aware and you were involved, right? Very involved in your career. I, I get that vibe from you. Like, yo, nobody's gonna tell you what to do with, with your stuff. But at the same time, you didn't know shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I think that that knowledge only comes with the experience of going through contracts yourself, replying to those emails yourself, you know, working those deals and maybe not even going the way you want it because you'll see uh, in hindsight, be like, ooh, I thought I had a good deal there. That, that wasn't it for me. I wish I would have, um, you know, negotiated differently in that in that situation. Yeah, and you have to kind of go through these things as artists. Uh, Nipsey Hussle had a brilliant quote about this thing. I think he's like, "This is why I learned to engineer myself." Yeah, right. So when I was in the studio and I went to these and big studios, and the engineer was like, "Oh, you can't do that." I'd be like, okay, well then get out the chair because I know how to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And this is why he understood his voice and his sound and he was able to create that Nip Nipsey Hussle sound and he took that into his business acumen because he did all the work himself. Yeah. Now, that can be a double-edged sword because in this industry, um, you know, it's very hard to find people that you trust. But when you do find those people that you trust, you have to be able to let go of the reins a little bit yeah. and delegate to them because you don't want to be micromanaging everything yes. because it hurts your career because you can't be cooking up all the time because you're always worried about what's going to happen. Yeah. So you have to give a little bit of room um, to let the other people who you trust do what they need to do. And sometimes that means making a mistake or two. But in the long run, they're gonna learn those lessons as well. You know? Yeah, I so. love the way I love the way you put that. I love like that that, that quote from Nipsey too, just yeah. like how he's approached it. Cause like I'm also an artist that records my own vocals. Right. Even to this day, like I've learned to like relinquish, you know, the things I'm not the best at. Yeah. But recording my own self, like my own vocals is definitely something I still do. I know I'm not the mixing and mastering engineer. I know like I could do my demo mix, right. but I know I'm not gonna make it really same. slap the way it has to. Yeah, yeah. Or like I know that, you know, I'm not the best I produce, but I'm not the best producer. But right. like I know I'm the one to do the lyrics. I'm the best at that. Right. Or I'm the best person to like lay those vocals right. uh, lay the vo vox vocals 
Vox. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> now yeah, you know yeah, you're yeah. engineer. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the person yeah. to do that, you know. Yeah. But and I think that also is what tricked me into thinking I was more involved in the business side of my career is because mm. I'm so involved in the music side. Right. And a lot of times that you hear that's the thing where maybe the labels or whoever you're working with they have so much say. It's like, nah, you can't put that project out because we want you to sing about this. Or we want you to talk about that. I never really had those issues, so it made me think mm. I was spearheading my business. But mm. I I realize now that I that I that I wasn't, and so like now. When I look at it, it's affected the front end. It's a, it's a balance beam of like, okay, yeah. this is how much I need to put into right. it, like a song or an idea, but then like really let my let my team hear it yeah. and really take that feedback in. Or on on the flip, on the business side, like knowing how the business operates, but then letting your team have input. But like also it shifted the type of bullshit that I'll deal with or put right. up with when right. it comes to business now Absolutely. too. Because yeah. now when I really see the, the types of moves, I'm not... I'm not. You ain't with it. You ain't with it. <laughs> I'm just not. Like, I've been doing this too long. Yeah. I've been doing this way too long to, like, allow someone to fuck with. Say with, it. With. Yeah, yeah. Like, I always knew that with the music thing, but I think with the business, again, there was a little bit of that passive element mm -hmm. that didn't affect me too greatly, thank God. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. now, like, the things I've learned about just, like, where you got to let go and where not to. I know now when I'm not willing to let go. Mm, yes. I don't care if it's an artist or another management team or yes. I don't care what it is. Like I've learned to start saying no to things. If it doesn't align with the brand, if the treatment yeah. isn't right, if the respect isn't there, like the in a no. way that I think is not like, oh, I'm up now and I'm cloudier. It's not like that. It feels like it's because I understand like what's worth my time or what's deserving of my energy and what isn't I, It's like, yeah, like it's crazy. I really thought I knew shit. Like I did an interview recently with Friday <laughs> that I produced myself. Right. And the tone of that interview is like you'd really think I knew shit. Yeah. <laughs> but but because I did I thought I did. I thought it was a great interview. It yeah. was a good interview. Yeah, but when yeah. I look back at it, there's some cringe moments for me. Mm. Because we're always evolving. Mm. And I feel like the air of how much I thought I knew does not align with where I feel like I'm at now. Because right. I I now know how much I don't know. Yes. Even I don't even know how much I don't know. <laughs> but I know that I didn't know as much as I thought I knew when I was looking at those cameras. Yeah. I really was talking like I knew shit. Right. And hopefully there's still some gems in there that people could take away. But this is almost like a little bit of a, like a part two where it's like, that was less than eight months ago. Or yeah. Well, no, my math isn't good. But yeah. it wasn't that long ago that right. I dropped yeah. that. And, and you've experienced so much more I've, and learned I've, so much since I, then. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Like, it's crazy how yes. much... I've learned in that little bit of time and it reminds me that I, there's so much more to go to learn. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have that student mentality, I think that's that's the way. Right. Because we all we all, a lot of people feel like they know stuff. Right. When I was 16 or I was a kid and I was young and I had my deal with Universal and Maple Music. Oh, you shit. couldn't tell me nothing. You right. know what I'm saying you can. I knew what I was doing. No, no, no. We're that's do a lot this. for 16 year old. Dad. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm like, no, we, we are pressing 5000 vinyls, yo, because this is what <laughs> needs to be done right now. <laughs> Fuck it. Put the budget in the vinyl, yo. That's it's gonna be popping. You know what I mean? I, I wish there's some things I would have done differently. Yeah. There's things I would have let go of the reins of a little bit more, you know. But that's okay because I learned. You know what I'm saying? I learned that's how to what you just Yeah, said. I learned how to navigate in that. So as long as I and now I'm always with the student mentality, you yeah. know? So and but like I said, there's a balance of that too because you have to know what you stand for and who you are first. Well, and also like being a student and also being a boss. I mean, you're legendary in the city. You've done a lot of things, right? Like you're an incredible artist. So there has to be some level of a student of the game, but yeah. also like you're also a teacher in the game at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's like you got to know when to wear what hat. And I feel like that is like it's very humbling mm -hmm. and valuable asset to a musician yes, i feel yes. like i'm starting to get to that point where yes. some people feel like i i've made it yeah and then i know i haven't right, right? but to some other people it's like I, yeah, yeah who is that in the comments who have i am i who's that right <laughs> yeah. so, so you, you got this balance so some people really think you figured you it, it all it, out yeah. and then some people are like i don't know i don't know who that bitch yeah. is. you know what i'm saying yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's very interesting because i do feel like it's it's but like you, you you hit the nail on the head when you said humbleness and ego right because we are in a very this industry is is built off of ego right yeah <laughs> and humility can you know lead to some people's detriment i don't think it does um you just have to know when to turn it on and turn it off when man's like maestro is talking to me i'm 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 humbling myself this right? is it this right? is it this is it you know what i'm saying even when you're giving me gems i know to humble myself because you've done things that i haven't done yet right and vice versa you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i know it doesn't matter where you are we're all students and we all can learn from each yeah. other i love you know? that so there's three things here ego's the 
What does he say? Ego is the anesthesia of the dead, the pain of stupidity. Mm. Secondly, say that again. Ego is the anesthesia Eagles. that deadens the pain of stupidity. Wow. Ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. Damn, I feel like I'm on shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> second, I love that. That's powerful. Wow. Yeah, I'll send you that. The, yes. s- the second thing is don't mess with the mighty gang. That's right. Hey. That's right. And the third thing is don't spend all your marketing money on 5,000 vinyls. Okay? Yeah, we guys, don't need to do that, thing. man. That's, no, that's <laughs> such a real, no, that's such a gem, though. That's such a gem because people don't realize that the tiniest little decisions are on you. Like, even to this day now, working with a new team is like, I've made it very clear. I'm like, I don't want to end up in a situation where I feel like I don't know what I'm doing yeah, anymore. Yeah. And so I'll be like, I want to have a say. And then I'll be like, well, I don't know. What do you think about this? And they'll be like, oh, this is this is a you decision. Right. Mm-hmm. This particular thing you asking about, you have to decide. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want to spend? Yeah, yeah. Like right now I'm going on, like I said, Euro trip. Yeah. It's. Yeah. There's a part of me that's like, is it the right move? Right. And I know it is because I know at the end of the day, like you have to grow right i'm like i'm not trying to move away so it's like well then you got to go places right, 100%. but when you got to go and then you got to bring the dj and then you got to bring the the agent and then yeah. you got to bring management to do some uh, connections for you and then you yeah. got to buy outfits for the 15 shows that you plan and yeah. then you got to decide what merch you're gonna bring and yeah. all of that stuff and then it's like and then the money is not coming out of an advance it's it's yeah. coming out of what you've generated over the last five years but you also know you got to put out an ep and keep the music going yeah and you know you got to put some big budgets behind that to reach more people than before. What you you want to strategize even bigger than before. Mm-hmm. The whole play is like, how do I budget? How much vinyl do I press? Mm-hmm. How many CDs do I make? Mm-hmm. Do I do CDs? Do people yeah. even listen to CDs yeah. anymore? Do I do hoodies yeah. uh, or, or, or T-shirts? Right. Oh, fuck. I heard white shirts don't sell well. Do I do <laughs> yeah, that? Do like, do there's it. so many. And it can become yeah. so overwhelming yeah. when you have to make all of those decisions. So what I've learned in, in that time and like... Yeah, in, in, in retrospect, I might have not impressed that many vinyls, but um, some great advice that I got was, yeah, listen, you're not always going to make the right decision. So nope. don't make the right decision. Just make a decision and make it right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's <laughs> like, all you can do. Yeah. That's all you can do. You guys do, are just yeah. dropping lots of gems. <laughs> That's all you can do, man. Yeah, out here. That's what happens when you take a few shrimps before the other one. I'm just joking. Uh, I'm y'all just didn't joking. call me. No, I'm, actually, joking. Joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Should we, uh... Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do the wrap-up okay. question. Yo, first off, Havaya, thank you so much for stopping Absolutely. by. This Thanks is for having great, me. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, great yeah. convo right here, you know. Go so, for hours, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, and, and this is the Dreams Don't Have Deadlines podcast, right? And our community, we're trying to motivate and inspire. And I know there are artists, creative people who are at a crossroads in their life, right? And they're not sure what to do and what moves to make. They might even feel like giving up at mm. this point. So um, I just want to ask you if you could look into that camera and take your time, and I want you to uh, think about why, what you would say to those people and why dreams don't have deadlines, in your opinion. Mm. Uh, honestly, I feel like where we ended up in the interview is a really good, it was a really good place to end because it kind of answers that question. It's like, like everything else in life, as long as you are on the course and on the journey, it doesn't end. It doesn't end until you get off the ride and I'm so I'm far enough in my career that some for some people this is making it for some people mm-hmm. this would be pinnacle you know and then I, at the same time I'm, I'm talking to two people that are doing incredible things in their own career and I'm saying to them I don't know shit and they're like me either <laughs> it's it's validation of the journey never ending right dreams can't die unless journeys just end you know what I mean? Like a dream just kind of expands and then gets more tentacles. Just take some shrooms. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking about that. But if you want. Um, it's like dreams have tentacles. And every dream that I've ever had that I've achieved yeah. became three or four more dreams. It never just ended or died. I mean, I think if that is happening, you've you've gotten off the path or you stepped off. The mm-hmm. the dream itself doesn't die. It it multiplies that's right bars. Yeah. <laughs> um and i love that I, yeah i think as long as you don't expect an end result that's like a definitive you know i think like because there's one thing that i do one of my friends said it to me um is when i'm when i'm in distress i try to find out the one thing that causes the problem mm. 
ironically, I think I was on shoes when we were, we were talking about this. And I was extrapolating on all these problems, like all these things I noticed about myself. And I was yeah. oh, complaining about X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. And I was like, what is the thing? And she's like, I think I know what your problem is. Mm. There could never be one, one thing, thing yeah. to define all of these issues that you have. Like you're just looking for one thing to solve a million problems. Right. That's not how life works. And when you reverse that concept, I feel like that really applies to dreams never dying, where it's like, if you feel like the dream, once you achieve it, it's like achieved. And I got that one thing that I want, it would, it would be so like narrow-minded and not aligned with the fact that you probably have concurrent dreams along that big dream. Mm -hmm. So you could be like, yo, I really wanna do music. I really want to do music and if I'm not able to do music then I'm not going to be happy. Right. But if we recognize that dream can extrapolate, we could be like I really want to do music. I enjoy being on stage, but I also like being behind the scenes. Yes. You know, now we've now that's become four different dreams. Yes. We might be happy engineering, we might be happy being the artist, we might be happy being a guitarist. That's like right. we've now recognized here's other facets or places and then those become other things. That's well, right. oh, you might play guitar and realize, "Damn, I really like the booking agent role. Yeah. I really like to actually make sure everybody sounds good." And then I'm going to become an engineer. Maybe I don't want to do studio engineering. Mm -hmm. I I want to be like on stage doing the live but yeah. like if you as long told, as you're open to those as long as you're open of, right yeah, and they're yeah. all kind of they're, they're kind of concurrent I, yeah. you're still doing music absolutely and the origin dream was i want to do music yeah. so i just think as long as we don't have a narrow-minded viewpoint of what our dreams are to begin with mm. we'll recognize that they can never die well, and we so. can they can morph they can change um they can actually become new dreams yeah. they can graduate yeah you know what I mean? Yep. So I just feel like, yeah, this this entire conversation, in my opinion, is a representation of the fact that dreams don't die. So, I mean, you said thank it. you for having I mean, me on the platform. Said, I feel like we really embodied that. Yeah, and, uh, for real. Yeah, like love. that's, I feel like that's like, that's like that's some real answer. answer. It sounded good, but it's also yeah, some real. Yeah. real. <laughs> um, love that answer. Yeah. That's an incredible answer. Uh, this has been an incredible um, discussion. And I want to say thank you so much for all your inspiration, you know, for the continued inspiration of all these dreamers out there, these artists paving the way. Um, and congratulations on all your successes. I Thank think you. we're super excited to see what's next for you. Um, so that tour video gonna be crazy that, yeah, too. It's gonna I be already insane. know. It's oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely had to add yeah. the expense, bring the shooter out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we appreciate you adding two extra tickets to your tour for me and Juice. You know, we can't wait to <laughs> to be on tour with you. Um, but you know, no. they just throw me under the bus. But no, this uh, this has been a pleasure. Um, this is the Dreams Don't Have Deadlines podcast. My name is Marlon Nominee. I got Juice Rochester, Rochester. The juice. And our guest, have I mighty. Let's get it. Work hard and I handle my business. Look up in the sky, whole squad, let's get it. No limit, no. no, no.